There's my dude. Dude, what's going on? I'm all right, man. How you doing? Man, I'm great. I'm great. Just, uh, <laughs> you know, just got out of the shower after seven days. It's all good. You, you're washing off the cobwebs from the studio. I'm washing off the, the quarantine cobwebs in the studio <laughs> and, uh, yeah, from the haunted farmhouse down here. Yeah, I, I've I'm got a bone like... to pick with you, John Fred, before we go any further. Serious bone okay. to pick with you. All right, pick it, so, pick it. Last time I saw you was in Camden Town, and I was DJing at the World's End, and you were on a night out on the town, cutting loose. Um, <laughs> wait, 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 say that one more time. <laughs> you were out in Camden uh, the night before you guys were set to headline Ramblin' Man. Yeah. And I was DJing in the bar you were in, the World's End, and we were catching up, we were having a drink, having a good time. And then you played Ramblin' Man the next day. I didn't get to make it down to Ramblin' Man the next day because I had to DJ again. And, yeah, I just couldn't get the night off. But I made it down to Ramblin' Man on the Sunday. And when I arrived on the Sunday, every single person that I saw said, what the hell did you do to John Fred on the Friday night? Because come Saturday, he was, like, head down backstage area just not talking to anyone hung over a wreck and apparently it was all your fault and i was like what oh, <laughs> he's no, throwing listen, me under it, the bus <laughs> we had we had a marvelous time and i'll tell you that was a that was a, a great night I, i'll cherish that and remember that for the rest of my life <laughs> i'll tell you though i did uh, i woke up were you feeling pretty special morning. the next day were you I, listen man I, i'm telling you that's one of the worst worst hangovers i've ever had in my life and i'll tell you what uh what's funny is <laughs> all after, of it <laughs> so i got home from that tour got yep. home from that tour have not had a drink since that tour really completely sober yeah and that's like yeah, almost no a year now oh yeah well i'll tell you what i lost about 15 pounds and i was feeling great and then we started quarantining, and then I started eating bread and snacks and cookies and cakes, and I've gained it all back. So, wow! Yeah. So you start hitting the gym, dude. Are I'm you, you are you sort of teetotal now? Then where are you at with with alcohol? What's the what's the vibe? Well, so yeah, so pretty much uh, since that tour, I was like, uh, I was like, man, you know what? I'm uh, I got home and I just I quit, man, for good. And it's it's crazy because now. Uh, the, the the funny thing about not drinking is, you know, when you when you're when you're drinking, you know, you got this like, uh, you know, kind of like anything that's bothering you or anything like that. You know, it just well, you know, it numbs it. Obviously, you shouldn't drink when you're when you have something bothering you. You should always talk about it and you know feel feel like you can get that off your chest. But when you're uh, in in my case, I was going through some stuff, right. and so instead of uh, you know being uh, being a, a professional, uh, responsible adult, I was just dealing with it with, uh, with you know, knocking back some some beers. And, right. You that, know, I, I mean, I, yeah. I, I mean, I I'd never seen you if I could if I could be so bold. I'd never seen you like you know we've partied loads before in the past and had had nights where we're drinking and cutting loose and stuff, but. I'd never seen you like that wasted before, and it wasn't like uh, a, a side of John that I was familiar with. Not like it, you yeah, didn't seem I, to be I'll too dark, it, but you just didn't seem to be the guy that I I knew. If that makes sense. No, and and I, I wasn't, and uh, you know it's it's crazy because I've never you know, I never had a uh, a drinking problem ever mm. in my life, and uh, but you know that this past summer I had some some uh, I was going through some stuff, you know, and uh, and I yeah I think everybody pretty much knows me as you know like this super big happy positive huggy dude and I yeah man I that's and I, I mean you're mr sunshine you're the guy that brings the light <laughs> and the laughter and you, you know what I, I i appreciate that and because uh, that's that's how i want to be all the time and i think that i guess when that's expected stuff, of you though it can be difficult right sometimes when you're not feeling that to put on the show and and be that guy sure. that you feel like people want you to be Sure, ab absolutely. You know, and it, and it's uh, it's it's tough sometimes too, because you know, as a, I think I I've always since day one, you know, I've I've never been the uh, uh, the guy that had anything, you know, that was uh, that was bothering him. I'd always you know shake it off, but no, I I think that as human beings, we go through things, and um, we we kind of I think I don't know if it's something that we're just we have in our DNA. It's like a oh, I can take care of it by myself type thing. But I think there's a point where you go, 
oh man, you know, you're, you know, you, you don't realize kind of, you don't realize it when you're in the forest, but then when you, you back up, you know, you can't, that old saying, you can't see the trees for the forest, you know, and I think that's yeah. where I was at. And, uh, yeah, my wife just sent me down and she's like, you, you know, Hey, look, you're, you're not doing the right thing. You're not dealing with the stress the right way. And I'm like, Whoa, I'm like, wow. And it was like a big, it was like a big shot of clarity in my, my, you know, face, a big slap of, uh, Hey buddy, you know, you gotta, you gotta, you know, not be a, a, a derelict. <laughs> you know, so I was like, okay, well, I told her, I told her right there, said it's a cheesecake factory. Uh, uh, I said, okay, look, I'm not going to drink anymore. You know, and she was like, okay, all right, all right, good for you. Uh huh. And I, and yeah, it's like, uh, I don't know. It's like maybe going on seven, eight months now. So wow. yeah, man, it's, it's great. I'll tell you one thing about it though. Good for you, dude. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, which I'm in, and you know, dude, it's, it's like I told my band guys too, you know, Chris, John, Ben, I'm like, don't, don't feel like you guys can't you know, drink around me. And, it, and it's, uh, you know, I, I have nothing against the alcohol. Hell, it's a, it's a, uh, a wonderful thing. But I, I think for me, uh, it was something that, you know, I just had to, uh, had to kind of cut out at a, at an early age. And I, I look at all these guys, man, that are, you know, uh, legends that we looked up to, and I'm like, golly, man, there was a, which I, to be honest with you, I've, I've never uh, taken a hard drug in my life. I've always been drug free. I mean, you know, uh, maybe some stuff that grew from the ground, but I mean, you know, as yeah, yeah. far as uh, chemicals you know, and narcotics and hard yeah, stuff, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so I've, I've always been really, uh, you know, against that stuff. But, but yeah, the drinking, it's funny because drinking is, it's one of those things that it kind of, it slips up on you without you knowing it because it's so socially accepted. You yeah, know? man. And, it, and it's like, oh man, you know, it's it's alcohol. You can go buy it down the street. So then you, you kind of got this thing of like, well, you know, if I'm responsible, if I'm not driving, which I I never never ever did that, uh, you know, and I'm not putting anybody in harm's way, then it's you know I'm I'm being professional and, and responsible about it. But then you go, wait a minute, man, this is uh this is some some stuff I'm dealing with, you know, and I'm, I'm masking it with with alcohol so but i'll tell you what it does do when when you're laying in bed and and now you know which i mean you know probably ever since i was you know 15 or 16 years old you know like every every kid you know which you guys start drinking you know at like what 15 or 16 in england and over here it's yeah yeah if not sooner mate <laughs> yeah, right right <laughs> the baby bottle but uh <laughs> you know it's it's kind of it's one of those things where every every kid uh you know, grows up sneaking some drinks, but yeah, I never really, never ever uh, had a had a situation where I was um, I was using it to to cover up um, you know my my uh, uh, situation I was going through. So yeah, 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 man. I just I totally said uh, I said hell with it, and I, and I feel great. But I tell you what, when you when you go to sleep at night, the only thing now that drives me nuts is my brain will not shut off. So oh, I mate, yeah, ideas. I know that like, feeling. I'm, yeah, you know, I'm trying. I'm trying to come. You know, I'm always running. Like, oh man, I need to. I need to start this business, or I need to do this, or I need to get up and practice. You know, drums at three o'clock in the morning. So, because your your productivity yeah. levels shoot through the roof, don't they? And if you're like it somebody does. who's very overactive anyway, uh, you're like, wow, I've got all this energy. There's no hangover cloud in me. I'm ready to go. But then I think, as you say, the hard thing is then learning when to switch off and chill out. That's it. <laughs> That's it. And two, I don't, I don't guess it helps now that, like, I've, I've always been a coffee fan, right? So, I mean, like, you know, pretty much, you know. You're me, surely a man like, that doesn't need coffee, John. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. I, I've got, so I've got two little girls. Yeah. And I've actually got one on the way that's due in July. Oh, so wow. You've got I'm, number three on the way. <laughs> yeah, man. Another little girl, too. So, so yeah, I've uh, I've kind of turned over a new leaf, man, trying to, trying that's wild. to uh, you know, get in shape and stay, uh you know, stay active and, and it's, you know, with, with everything going on in the world now, it's kind of like, man, dude, you're, you're for, for the first time in, in my life since probably, you know, 20, 21 years old when we first started touring, I've had this time at home where I haven't had this before. And it's, it's crazy, man, where, uh, you know, now I'm like, oh my gosh, I got all this time and all, all these, all these projects I'm going to do. So I'm trying, I'm trying to put a lot of my effort into, um, you know, working harder at being active on social media. I know it sounds so so weird, you know, but I mean that's kind of the time we're in. And so yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, put, I'm I'm going putting a lot more effort into my craft, you know, uh, just just uh, trading the, the the time that you know I guess we would 
we would be touring, obviously, you know, into, you know, shedding at the house, if you would, you know, wood shedding. Yeah, I get it. Well, what a great unexpected turn in the conversation, and I'm loving it. Let's come back and let's talk some more in a bit. Um, let's break. Absolutely. Let's break for the first of your five songs now. This is a dude, right? Every song I've ever heard written by this guy, I've loved, but I've never spent like real time down the rabbit hole getting to know his music. And after listening to this song that you've picked by Jeff Lynne, um, I think the rest of you know my week is going to be spent just checking out everything that this guy has to offer because he is such an amazing songwriter, isn't he? Such an oh amazing gosh. songwriter. You've he, picked uh, "Lift Me Up" as the track. Tell us about you know this song, your relationship to it, and why it stands out. So for, for me, Jeff Lynn is one of the you know greatest songwriters of all time. To, to me, really, you know he. He was kind of, I mean, obviously George Martin was such a huge uh, instrumental guy with the Beatles. You know, everybody knows that. But I think Jeff, for me, was like, if, if you could have had a fifth Beatle, yeah. he, he would have been it. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, I, I found out about Jeff Lynn when I was about nine or ten years old. My dad, Richard, that plays with the Headhunters, he told me, like, we were, I can't remember what we were doing, but we were, we were up in his music room, and we were just listening to records. He goes, man, he goes, if you want to, like, hear one of the greatest albums ever written, it's this album right here. And it was, uh, it was Jeff Lynn's Armchair Theater. And this, this album, it's, uh, it's, <laughs> it's so 90s, man. It's like Jeff sitting on this big plush armchair on uh, the top of this, you know, rocky uh, cliffside. And I, I don't know, I'm, you know, it could have been somewhere in England, uh, or I don't, I don't know, maybe it was in, you know, Malibu or something. But it's, it's crazy because I just, I have the, the vivid imagery of that album, and I, I never can get away from that. And I think, like, that's so important when you're discovering music at, at a young age, and, and even when you get older too. Because I mean, I, I discover, you know, stuff all the time that I go, wow, how did I miss this album? Um, you know, much like you with the Jeff stuff, because there's stuff that I, you know, Chris or Ben or John will bring up. They're like, man, have you ever heard this record? And I'm like, no, you know, and vice versa. But Jeff's album, uh, Armchair Theater, for me, was such an awesome record. I mean, there's there's so many great songs on that record. Lift Me Up, I chose because I just remember being a kid and, and hearing that record in my dad's room. And it was just like, holy cow, man, what a sound. And like, you know, it's timeless. His, his stuff is timeless. And all the ELO stuff, I mean, I was, I was pretty bummed, man. Like, I, he played uh, uh, Nashville, Tennessee, uh, at the big arena down there uh, a couple years ago. And I, I wanted to uh, go see him, but we were on tour. It was the all across the globe or all across the world tour. And, uh, yeah, he's just a monster, man. Anybody that's never heard of, of Jeff, you know, obviously you've heard of him. You know, you've, you might not have known it, but he's a great artist to listen to. And, um, you know, obviously the stuff he did with the Traveling Wilburys. I mean, that's, yeah, like, man. dude, that's timeless stuff. Yeah, I mean, I'm all about it. This is going to be my week. It's just going to be Jeff Lynn down the rabbit hole all day and night. <laughs> there you go. I'm stoked. <laughs>
So here's what I want to talk to you about, John. Is Kentucky still based? Is that still home for all you guys? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. We, um, all of us still live in Kentucky. Um, How is it out there like, at the moment? What's the vibe in your community with everything that's going on? Well, you know, obviously we're right in the middle of this, this uh, coronavirus outbreak. And, you know, I, I'll tell you, man, it's a, I, just like everybody else in the world, it's a weird time to be living in. Um, mm-hmm. I hate the fact that... You know, there's there's been a lot of um, you know people lost their lives to this, and um, it's it's just tough. But I, I think, you know, I imagine that every single country and, and community within you know the the towns they're they're dealing with the same type thing. It's just in different uh, it's just in different you know lights. I mean, I, for us being out in the country. I think it's wonderful because the social I, I distancing thing must be a little bit easier, right? Because there's just more open space. It, it is. So, I mean, like, you know, for us, we personally, I, I live on, uh, you know, a farm that my grandparents bought in the seventies and, uh, I bought some land right outside the, the edge of the farm. So, uh, it's, it's great. I mean, we get to get outside and stuff and it's, it's been pretty wet in the, the last couple of days. So I've got, you know, the girls out there playing and stuff, but it's hard because, you know, my mom and dad will come down and like, you know, sit at the end of the driveway and, you know, the kids are on the porch and it's like, they want to go hug, you know, you know, Mimi and Pappy and they can't do it, you know, and it's, and it's heartbreaking. Thank you. And, uh, but I think I think one thing that for us I hope I hope people you know I, I think this is going on probably well I don't know you guys may have a better handle on it I hope but I think people are not taking this as serious I, I know some people are and, and and tons of people are but I think I think it's one of those things that maybe if you know if people haven't really checked in with the news and and you know obviously there's people that don't. I think that some people are missing the seriousness that this is. You know, they, they yeah, think, man. well, you know, there's virus going around, and it's it's just, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things, just like the flu. And it is, but it's a it's a super duper one, man. And it's a uh, yeah, it's there's, be taken there's over fifty thousand deaths already. You know, that's know, a lot. It, it's it's I never, you know, man, I never thought I would live through a time where we we had to. Uh, um, you know, have something like this going on. And, and you know, I, I'll be honest with you, we're, we're right in the middle. Uh, we were right in the middle of making our seventh record. So we were down in the woods. Uh, John, you know, our bass player built a, uh, a really cool cabin, and, and he's, he's got such a awesome, you know, collection of gear that he put in there. So we, we have, uh, <laughs> you know, the sidetrack here, we've made one of the best albums I think we've ever made, hands down. And I, I've, I've always... You know, on records, I'm proud. I'm so proud of every record. I don't. I don't want to, you know, have anybody think. Well, you know, you know, you make a record and you say that, and then you know, it's it's, uh, you know, you, you always you always go back and, and think. Well, you know, I could have I could have did this better. Or this could have been tighter. Or could have had a better you know melody here. This is the only record in a long time where all four of us, you know, we we actually produced the whole record. So that was that was really great. I mean, you know, we did. Um, after after we left Roadrunner in 2015, we did uh, two albums, Kentucky and Family Tree, on the Mascot label group out of Holland. And uh, are you not I'm with them anymore? Those records. Do what now? Are you not with them anymore? Have you moved on? No, we're still we're still with Mascot. We're still with Mascot. So this will be our third. 
right, the right. third record with Mascot. Right, right, yeah. They're, yep. they're wonderful, wonderful label. I mean, they're they um, really, really been great to work with because they they just let us do us, you know. And uh, you know, well, they, that, they, I mean, they the guy who owns good. the whole label is like a, a fan, right? That's the vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a great friend, and, and it, it's it's really uh, it's nice to to be that close to uh, you know the the evil record label. You know, I mean, yeah, the suit, situation, yeah. Yeah, well, you know, hey, look, it's it's great because, you know, instead of, uh, I, well, I mean, we're at that point in our career now, too, where I know it's different from a band just starting out, a young band, because, you know, I, I remember when we first started, it was, uh, you know, to talk to the record label, you know, even with a record deal, it was, was kind of like trying to, like, you know, talk to the wizard, you know, behind the curtain, mm-hmm. and, uh, but now it's, no, it's, you, 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 as you progress, you know, you, you understand that there's still that, you know, kind of, I guess, uh, you know, uh, polit- political system you have to go through, like the, the steps and all that stuff. But I, I think now it's kind of like they, they just know we're a bunch of uh, uh, crazy Kentucky dudes. We're just we're going to make up a badass record. And <laughs> just let them crack on. It, so. <laughs> yeah. But I'm telling you, man, this record, it is uh, it, it, it is really, really special. I mean, I think, too, going through the, the, the times we're living in making this thing, it put... It put a certain pressure on us that we've obviously never experienced before. I mean, you always have the pressure to make a great album, but then yeah, this is like, man, we were sitting there, you know, reading these, uh, like, you know, singing harmonies and, and, you know, making a great rock and roll record, but at the same time, you know, having, uh, you know, checking checking the phone like, oh, gosh, you know, what's what's going on now? You know, it's kind of like you're you're in the, uh, you're, I don't know, I, I, I described it to somebody. I was saying, you know, it's like we're way off in the distance watching the storm coming. You know, if you're watching a tornado coming and you're just trying to see when it's going to get to you, you know, and, and that's that's kind of the way we felt. But but I think hopefully, you know, hopefully um, in, in, a, in a little time, you know, I hope sooner than later, obviously, just like everybody else does, I hope we can we can kill this thing out and everybody get back to normal life, you know. Amen to that, dude. Um, let's break for another song. Your second one is off my favourite Led Zeppelin album. You've actually chosen two songs off this album, so I'm guessing, is it your favourite record too, Houses of the Holy? Yeah, you know what? When I was a kid... What a bad boy. <laughs> I'll, never, I'll never forget this. So my, my grandparents, my dad's mom and dad, were, were pretty rock and roll. So my, my grandfather was a, uh, a historian. He was a school teacher for 40 years, and he was one of the most marvelous guys you'd ever meet. So, so intelligent. Uh but he, he was not really that big into rock and roll. Like he played, uh, he played all kinds of, you know, like boogie woogie piano and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, he was super proud of my dad and my uncle for, for, uh, everything they did in headhunters. He was super proud of us, you know, the black and cherry guys. And my grandmother, she was the rock and roller though. She was the blues and, and, uh, R and B gal. And, and I remember being a kid and she would have, like she had this old like Casio stereo in her house, and every like my uncle lived there like until he was thirty because the headhunters were still touring and stuff. So all his records were still there, you know. It's like a teenager's room, you know. And I, I'm from the seventies. I'd go in there and pull these records out, and I just remember House of the Holy. I, you know, I thought, man, this is such a weird album cover. I was probably Isn't like, it? I don't know, nine or ten, you know. And I put it on, and I was just like, dude, what? what? what is this like what am i listening to and that was that was not my first introduction to zeppelin actually dad um had the box set um with the um with the crop circles on it i think they released that maybe in like the 90s you remember that big square zeppelin box set that mm-hmm. had like the all the crop circles so we would listen to that but i remember fred he was the one that had all these albums so house the holy was a great record and uh it's hard to pick a bad Led Zeppelin song, dude. I'm, I'm a obviously a huge John Bonham fan, and uh, I remember when we were. I'll, I'll tell you a funny, quick story. So when my dad and uncle put the Headhunters together uh, in the seventies, or excuse me, in the in the nineties, you know they, they won you know Grammys and had you know big, huge you know country songs here in America. But before that, they were a band called Itchy Brother, which was a crazy name. <laughs> but uh, one day, my dad called up you know uh, Atlantic Records and because they were huge Zeppelin fans and he, he talked to it was like late one Friday afternoon he talked to this guy he said hey man we're a band from Kentucky we got some great songs and we just we'd like for somebody to come down and listen to them 
And uh, this guy who picked up, he was like, oh, man, you know, I don't know. And, and my dad, I guess he, he, he uh, laid the, the, the big BS line on him and, and got him to actually come down to, to the farm here where the old practice house is. They grew up rehearsing there. And so he comes down, and he falls in love with their band. He's like, oh, man, this is, this is like Led Zeppelin from America, but it's, it's totally different, too. So they start working on um, – they start working on demos and, and over the next, you know, three or four years, they, they get some really good songs together. And, uh, the guy's name was Mitchell and he worked at Atlantic and he was, uh, he worked with, with Zeppelin. He was their PR guy for a long time. And, wow. uh, so what happened was they, Mitchell took their demos, uh, to, to Peter Grant and he was, you know, and he flew over, flew over to England, went to, went to the, you know, Peter's house and, I guess Peter listened to it and liked it a lot, and he was like, yeah, man, love this band. So they were going to be one of the first American bands to be signed on the Swan Song label, and then, obviously, like, everything's going great, and then John Bonham passes away. So everything was just like, it came to a complete halt. So to tell you how crazy that is, you know, the, the Headhunters could have been, uh, you know, Itchy Brother, this band that, you know, was from the middle of nowhere, a rock band, and, you know, because obviously, you know, tragically, Bonham's passing it, it changed the course of history. And I remember, you know, dad was telling me, he's like, man, he's like, what, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And um, Mitchell actually kept in touch and he moved to Nashville. And he's he's been my dad's best friend, like absolute brother ever since those days. And he's he's like an uncle to me. And so that that's like. <laughs> that's a little rock and roll history right there. He actually managed the Headhunters with, with my dad for years and years. So it's it's crazy how something like such a tragedy like that can turn out. But I told Dad, I was like, dude, I'm I'm glad like that. You know, you're, you kept in touch because I mean, you know, he he was there for the Headhunters too. You know, that's a trip, dude. What a great story. It's a trip, man. I know it's a trip. And the song you've gone with, No Quarter, um, very apocalyptic vibe as well. Slinky little it fucking is. scary number. I love it. it.
couple of things i wanted to ask dude first of all like as a father um and your kids are still pretty young how are they like processing what's going on you mentioned earlier obviously it must be heartbreaking for them because they want to give their grandparents a hug and and they can't i mean how do you try and explain to them what's going on and, and how are they you know dealing with not being in school and not getting to see their friends like as a dad how's how's this situation kind of hit you well i'll tell you it's uh I think for I think everybody out there that's got kids and their kids are at home right now, you know, I think I think there's a lot of parents that are like, Oh man, golly, what we what what do we do? But I think uh, and we we kinda of felt that way too, you know, making sure that, you know, obviously she's uh, our oldest is, is five, so she's in preschool and uh, so yeah, we're we're we've got work packets and stuff that the school sent home and I think that you know, she's done one page out of like fifty, and we're 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 slacking, dude. We're slacking, but I tell you what, we are doing. I've, it's been it's been really cool for me because, like one of one of the biggest things with me is I've I've wanted to make sure that my kids 
you know, enjoy music and um, and learn things about music, and not necessarily have to follow in my footsteps or my dad, you know. But I, I want to give them the opportunity. So my house is like, you know, it's like a guitar center teenager's room that just exploded. I mean, I got stuff laying everywhere. It's kind of like a um, musician gear hoarder house. So I mean, but they they run around and play on you know little pianos, and, and my drums are set up and guitars. So it, they we've had a lot of really good times so far that you know we've been able to just kind of this first time in my life i've been able to sit down and you know teach my kids like piano chords you know so it's, it's my you know i've got a two-year-old and uh she's uh, you know she she doesn't obviously know what's going on but but my oldest is uh she she knows she knows there's a virus going around and we can't you know we can't catch it and we have to be really careful and wash our hands and, and stay you know stay with just our little you know nest here but i think you know what? One thing that I really, I, and I'll be honestly, man, straight up, you know, no, no gray area with me. Um, during the time that this all started happening, um, man, I, I had, I had this, uh, uh, I had like three kind of mini emotional breakdowns, and it was just, I think, being a parent and worrying about, like, you know, kids that obviously, like, I. I'm not sure how, how it works with you guys over there, but you know, there's a lot of kids like here in the States that they depend on eating, you know, their, their meals at school. So it was tough. And I was like, you know, I got, I was going to the studio and, uh, I got behind one of our County school buses and, and they were, you know, stopping. I'm like, man, what school's not in today. And I'm like, that's not like what, you know, we got this thing going on. I, I didn't think, I thought they canceled school, you know, and what it is, they're, they're giving meals to, uh, you know, kids, so to make sure that they don't, uh, they, they have, you know, have something to eat, and it just hit me like a ton of bricks, and it broke my heart, and I, I was just like, oh my gosh, I was like, how, you know, how fortunate are we, you know, and sometimes we overlook stuff like that, and, uh, but I, I think, too, man, it's just, it, it, I think we all have to be strong and try to, try to help our neighbors out as much as we can, and I know that's hard because, you know, you say, well, you know, how, how do I help my neighbor out when I can't even, you know, get six feet from them? And, you know, I think I think the best thing to do if, you, if you're comfortable, you know, financially and you know somebody else isn't, it's like, you know, maybe if you can if you can put on a gas mask or, you know, one of the, you know, the, the mask and go get them some groceries and just drop it off on the porch and knock and, you know, spray it with Lysol and just, you know, say, hey, man, here it is. You know, I think those are stuff that as long as we're not in a lockdown type state, if, if people can help out and do stuff like that, I think that that's, uh, you know, that's that's a little sign of hope, you know, because I, I don't know, it just tore me, tore me to pieces thinking about kids in our own county here who, you know, relied on, you know, food from school. And, and so a big, a big, you know, uh, big props to our school system for, for having their, their uh, you know, facilities, their kitchens and stuff still open and, and running you know, food on the buses and stuff to kids. So I think that's, uh, it made me really proud. And I, I know that's, that's going on in a lot of, uh, in a lot of States as well. They're, they're doing those, those food programs for kids. So I don't know, just dad, it just, it kind of hit me in the heart, man. You know, I hear you dude. And I think when people have a, you know, a platform and, and, and ability to help, then, you know, now is the time to step up, isn't it? And be selfless and, and do what you can for those that aren't as fortunate or that, you know, perhaps need, need the help and some people never want to ask do they that's another thing like pride i think stops people sometimes from kind of saying oh you know i I could use a little bit of a helping hand here but there's a there's a lot of cool stuff going on where we are as well there's been something happening every week at um 8 p.m on a thursday night i mean this is a very little thing and it kind of might seem a bit flippant but just the the idea behind it i think is pretty special and basically what happens is every thursday at 8 p.m everybody goes out onto the street or hangs out of their window and claps and cheers for the National Health Service and basically make, that. makes that's, noise that's and shows their appreciation for all the doctors and the nurses and the healthcare workers that are out there, you know, putting themselves at risk to, I, to help I, cure I saw, others. You know, I, I'm sorry, I, I saw uh, Brian May doing that on his Instagram the other night. And, uh, you know, I, I thought at first, I was like, dude, that's not the... <laughs> that's not the beat dude it's boom boom, boom. <laughs> you know? yeah. and, and then I, I read I read you know and I was like oh that's that's incredible because I like you said I mean there's you know but you, you, you know you think you see something like that and it's uh 
it's you know it might seem small but you know those nurses and doctors and the people that you know even even the the staff at the hospitals the the people that are cleaning man you know yeah not yeah you, know, you know you don't have to just have a degree to, to of course uh, yeah man be recognized because i mean like, these people are well they're absolutely putting their lives at risk right now and uh man we're we're, we're in a crazy time i mean we really are and i think the the best thing we all can do is like you said if, if you you know if you've got a platform and you can't help it, it you know you don't have to be famous or, or you know uh rich you, you know and and, and uh, count me out of those two because i'm not but <laughs> but you know if, if there's something you can do i mean there's you know anything if it's uh, just helping your neighbor because i think i think on that local level that's what where it starts you know i, I think, yeah, I think a lot of people sometimes say oh man what can i do because you know i'm you know just I, I a guy like yeah a, i'm just a person just an individual yeah, yeah. And, and that's that's the most special thing you can be, though. That's the most special thing is, is just to be a human being. And, and it doesn't matter if you have, you know, if you don't have Instagram or Facebook, if you're just, you know, somebody who can, you know, help, man. It's, uh, I think I think a lot of people are, are out there who want to help, and they're not sure how because I think it's, we're, we're I mean, better lack, lack of better words, we are. We're isolated right now. And, uh, you know, you know, Kentucky has our state motto, it's uh, united we stand, divided we fall, and I have lived by that motto my entire life. Like I actually uh, used to carry a, a, a Kentucky State flag in my in my uh, travel bag everywhere I went. I'm so proud to be a Kentuckian, still am. And uh, but man, it's it's hard looking at it's hard looking at that motto right now and reading it because it's like man. We, you know, united we stand. We, we can't hard, we can't stand six feet from each other, you know. But I think, I think metaphorically, you know, if it, you know that it applies because you know we can be united, even though we're, you know, physically we can't be right next to each other. I think that the minds and hearts and soul of people worldwide, you know, no matter what, you know, what um, religion you are, or where you know what color your skin is, or where where you're from, or anything like that. I think that it's it's. We, we've we've been put back on a level of just all of us being human. No matter what your political party is, no matter you know your uh, your sexual orientation, anything. It doesn't matter. It's it's just a uh, we're, we're fighting something that's that's affecting all of us. And I think that we've just got to try to really sit back and and um, you know just love each other and and try to just try to absolutely do the best we can and don't hoard all the damn toilet paper you know yeah man well isn't it crazy just before this whole thing kicked off i feel like we were more divided as a species than than ever before in human history and also the earth was in you know complete crisis more so than ever before and i feel like both the earth and the human race needed this almost we needed it to get us in check and and force us to wake up and take a break have a breath bury our differences, get together, and if it's a hard, tough situation, and it's only going to get tougher before it gets better, I think, and there's going to be deaths and it's going to be horrible, but I feel like ultimately everything that we're going through is going to make the earth and humanity hopefully you know, better because of it and stronger and more united and healthier and happier. And We can dream, right? We can hope. I, I agree. I mean, I you know, I, I think, um, you know, I hate, I hate this is happening. I mean, I, I hate that anybody's had to uh, perish from this because I know there's there's tons of, uh, you know, people that, you know, f- for me, I'm, you know, I've, I've got a grandmother that's, uh, she's got leukemia and, you know, we obviously we can't go see her right now. And, uh, and she just lives right up the road. So, I mean, it's, it's tough. And I think that, you know, the, the, the biggest thing for all of us, like you said, it's, um, we we've been put back to ground ground zero here with with just being humans, you know, and, and putting all our differences aside. And, and I think it's you know you look at pictures of industries now, and where you know you look at um, you look at uh, over in China, it's like man, you can like I saw a picture the other day of the city, and it's like I, I didn't even know that city looked like that from the smog, you know. And it's it's crazy. I think um, I think the biggest thing, man, is just really understanding that this thing doesn't just affect old people uh i mean old people elderly uh it, it affects everybody and yeah. I, I think that was probably the misconception early on yeah you know, as yeah, well, definitely. you know 
you know, you have you have death from from the flu and and things like that. Uh, you know, on a you know a yearly basis, but most of the time it's it. I, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. Most of the time it's statistically in the elderly, you know, community. And I think that this thing it doesn't care, you know. And um, so I think it's really important for all of us to you know isolate ourselves i know everybody's probably tired of hearing it but the social distancing thing i you know it's important it really is and you know i was watching uh was watching on tv the other night all these kids that are going to you know florida going to spring break and i'm like golly i'm like that is uh that's just nuts man you know mm-hmm. i mean <laughs> that was selfish know, that was and my... ridiculous yeah and so so oh, stupid <laughs> well and, and i think you know it's 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 uh if I was 21, you know, I, I think that I would, I would, uh, my parents would probably, you know, beat me, you know, if mm-hmm. I'd even mentioned doing something like that right now. But, but I, you know, I, I think that at that time, probably the kids just didn't realize that, you know, oh my gosh, this, this is not just an elderly, um, situation where it affects the elderly. It's, it's a, it any age, you know, so, but hopefully, man, if everybody can just, just for, a, you know, a month, you know, a month and a half, you know, if we can just lock down and stay put in place you know i think i think this it'll, it'll be over you know we just gotta just gotta be responsible you know and then the rigby by the beatles uh what a beautiful song man the strings and this <sighs> it's one of my favorites of all time i mean uh I'm, i i love the beatles i i grew up my my dad like you know everything everything musical comes from my dad and uncle i know people are people have interviewed us over the years are probably like okay dude we get it yeah <laughs> your, dad, your dad and your uncle are in a huge you know country rock band you know but I, it is I, it's hard man it's hard not to mention these guys because you know it's like they they really were the were the guys that influenced us and allowed us to have the old practice house on on the farm here and, and uh, become Blackstone Cherry, you know, without them, without that, without my grandparents, you know, our, our, I, I really, I can tell you, we wouldn't be a band. You know? I, no, I love we're, that. You've always acknowledged that band, and you know? you've always celebrated that, man. And not, you know, so, so many people forget where they came from and forget those, you know, early helping hands. And once they're successful, they're like, oh, we, we've done this all on our own back because we rule. And I find it really refreshing when people like yourself always take that moment to go, here's why we're here. Uh, and I'm, you know, forever grateful for that. And I'm still connected to that. And it's a beautiful thing. Well, thank you, man. I, I appreciate that. And, uh, you know, it's, we're, we're a different, uh, we're a different band. I mean, I, you know, I always compare us to, uh, you know, <laughs> in comparison to a jackass in a thoroughbred horse race because we're you know we're not going to finish first we, we're not I might not even finish last but you know we're we're definitely going to get there you know and, and it's, <laughs> we're definitely uh, going to finish <laughs> we're definitely going to finish you know but no i i tell you i the the beatles going back to the beatles they they were such a huge influence on me personally i uh yeah, you know, my dad was a huge John Lennon fan, and uh, I, I named our <laughs> my wife and I we named our our daughter Scout. Um, her first name is McCartney. So Amazing. I mean, you know, pretty big fans. Love, I love. <laughs> but it, Eleanor Rigby for me is like it's one of the most beautifully arranged songs that you know, and, it, and it's hard, man, because you, you know if you have a favorite band, it's hard to pick up a favorite song. I mean, that's yeah, just especially the when is, they're a band know? like the Beatles and they've got so many different sounding songs. So many, so many, and uh, you know, I, I'll tell you something. This this new album that we just we just finished last Saturday, so we're, we're well, dude. We're let's all let's play the song and then let's come back and talk all about that because that's where I want to go next. So let's awesome. uh, let's drop this track like it's hot, which it is. Ah, look at all the lovely people. Picks up the rice in the church where a wedding has been Lives in a dream, waits at the window Wearing the face that she keeps in a jar by the door Who is it for? All the lonely people Where do they all come from? All the lonely people Where do they all belong? Father Mackenzie Writing the words of a sermon That no one will hear 
No one comes near. Look at him working, donning his socks in the night when there's nobody there. What does he care? All the lonely people. Where do they all come from? All the lonely people. Where do they all belong? Rigby died in the church and was buried along with her name. Nobody came. Father Mackenzie wiping the dirt from his hands as he walks from the grave. No one was saved. All the lonely people. Where do they all come from? All the lonely people. Where do they all belong? Yeah, dude, you said you just finished it literally a week ago. So it's it's right there, it's fucking done, it's fresh. It's still hot it's out of the oven. It's fresh, man. I'll tell you, it's, it's crazy because um, I, a little backstory on before we went in the studio. This is, so we, we stopped touring um, for 2019. Our last show was, it was kind of really cool. We had four Kentucky shows. So we, we played... Um, Played over in Eastern Kentucky and then up in uh, up in around Lexington and, and then we ended. Uh, I'm sorry, we did out in Western Kentucky and then ended in Eastern. And the last show was around like November the I can't even remember remember now, but it was in November. And I remember Chris was absolutely just struggling, struggling, struggling to sing because we from when Family Tree debuted. Uh, in April of 2018, up until November, this last November, we we did like it was over like 300 dates, you know, and uh, that's just I mean, you know, we everybody knows, man, we tour. I mean, that's that's where we live, that's where we eat and breathe, and uh, our our live show is something that we hold very dear to our heart, and we want to make sure that we deliver the best we can. So we're going out there putting blood, sweat, and tears into it, and and Chris is just a you know, man, anybody that knows Chris, he is uh he's a monster. He's a monster vocalist and the big hearted guy you'd ever meet. And uh I think it's it's one of those things where we just tour so much. His uh he started having trouble the last four or five shows. He's like, Guys, my voice is just like it's it's shot, you know? And uh, you know, we were all we were all feeling it, you know, we were just like ah, worn out. But uh we were kinda worried about Chris and so when we got home he went to a great buddy of ours, local guy ear nose and throat doctor and he said man you got a callus on your uh on your vocal cord you know and uh so chris was kind of worried and you know the doc told him he's like look man he said i operate on these all the time you know this is not a this is not a big thing we'll get you an outpatient get you get you you know right back to singing so he went in and had the surgery and um you know it was Dude, like for two weeks, like he couldn't, he couldn't, uh, he couldn't talk for a week, and he couldn't sing for two weeks. So, we're <laughs> so the day I loaded in drums to to get you know everything ready in the in the tracking room, um, Chris had his surgery that day. So, you know, we, we're all going, you know, we're like, oh my gosh, dude, you know, we're kind of freaking be able out. To do it, yeah. You know, obviously, you have, have positive hope. You know, you, you want to stay positive and. But, I mean, there's always that, that feeling in the back of your mind. You're like, oh, my gosh, dude. Like, this is, you know, what if something went wrong? And Chris was worried, too. But he was he was really positive. And so he went in, got it done. Uh, he was out in, like, 45 minutes and came came back home and was resting. And I remember the first day he came out of the studio, you know, he wasn't talking. And it's so funny because you know, Chris and I in our band are like the um, – we're like – we're like – you know, push and pull. We, we've been together the longest. I, we went to, I mean, I've known him since kindergarten. You know, wow, been, right, right. Your, your school friends. It's history, know, so man. Yeah. History, dude. So it's funny. So he's sitting there and, you know, he's he's like, can't talk. And I'm just like, oh, man, I can ream you so hard right now. You can't say anything. He's just he's smiling. And the first day that he's able to talk, he starts talking. And I, we could already tell his voice was just, it, it sounded totally like you know it sounded 10 years younger we were like man like you, 
your voice. It's 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 sounds it sounds like you, but it sounds like you're you know, your fresh Chris, you know? And he's like, I know, man, it's it's weird. It's like a it's like a it's almost like I <laughs> drank from the fountain of youth. So the first day he goes to sing vocals, he goes in the vocal booth and you know, we're all kinda like Gosh, okay, man, yeah, you know, whew, you're gonna nail this, dude. Back from our, our, everybody's minds were like, oh, Jesus, man, please, please. So he he opens that golden throat of his, dude. <laughs> his voice, his voice sounds amazing, and it 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 uh, it's still Chris. I mean, but it's just, I think that where we had toured so long and you He's know, not relying it, yeah. on any kind of backing tracks or anything like that, and Chris just he he sings like Chris does, like a powerhouse. He gets in there and like, I mean, it almost brought tears to your eyes because his voice sounded so rejuvenated. And I'll tell you, man, on this record, he, uh, he, he, uh, his voice sounds unreal. He's a, he's a monster. I mean, it sounds great. And we worked so hard on this record, man. We, we produced it and we analyzed every single part to the point where, you know, we were joking, you know, about. You know how Mutt Lang did the Def Leppard records, and yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, to the point was, where you're driving yourself insane, almost, right? But you've got to get it so perfect. <laughs> that's that's what we did. We drove ourselves nuts. I mean, it it was, man. And you know, but I, I'll tell you something. Uh, I think people are going to hear this record and be so happy because it's it's got a great mix of of everything we've ever done. You know, the the little, you know, traces of you know the the debut record back in '06, and it's got you know some stuff that is reminiscent of folklore and it but it sounds huge and and we're just super proud of it man it's um it's some actually to tell you the truth we wrote four songs um on the back of the bus uh last year and then a lot of the stuff are these hidden gems that we've never put on any albums up till now and you know i know a lot well, of you mean like the odd riff here the odd melody here the odd lyric there yeah. yeah, I mean, honestly, we, we've had, you know, it's crazy because we, we've got like a catalog of old songs that we never recorded. And it's, I think a lot of people, you know, feel like, oh man, you know, if it's an old song and you never used it, it, it must have not been any good. Well, no, it's the process of picking songs is so hard because you, you've only got, you know, when you when, a, when an artist does an album, you've only got pretty much, you know, 11 to 13 possibly 14 tracks you know that you can put on the album you, you don't want to you don't want to put just nine or ten because then you know everybody's like man that's not enough songs but you don't want to put too many because then it you know it's, it's kind of overkill so a lot of these records we did in the past we would do you know 25 to 30 songs you know for the album you know working really hard writing uh writing with you know outside guys writing with ourselves and you know you narrow it down you only get you only get to pick, you know, 12 or 13 songs to the record. So what you're left with is you're left with maybe, you know, 8, 10 to 12 songs uh, that you didn't get to put on the record. So we've had that stuff, you know, stockpiled, you know. And uh, it's crazy because every time we put out a record, we're so proud of it. We're like, man, I wish we could have put that one more on there, you know. Mm-hmm. So this was the one where, honestly, it, it can, I don't want anybody to think, you know, this is like, oh, man, they like, they just, you know, they got lazy and put a bunch of old songs. No, these songs were... Just a B-Sides so album, weird. yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not that at all. Well, I mean, also, really what you have, John, is you have like, you know, there's there's a riff or a part that maybe was not quite right for that one song at that time. And you so you then bring it into this new format. And, you know, it's almost like the Frankenstein monster approach, isn't it? Of Actually, a song what, 13 is... years apart is going to be a completely different thing because you're at a different point in your life. The band sounds different, but maybe there's that one little hook or drum roll or whatever there that, you know, stands up now and has finally found its place, as it were. Yeah, I couldn't have said it better. You you nailed it. It's uh, that That's exactly what we did. We did rock and roll, <laughs> Frankenstein surgery, and, and it came out unreal. I mean, I, I've been listening to uh, we, our, our great friend, uh, Jordan, who is our, our live uh, monitor engineer. He's a monster, monster. Uh, studio guy and uh we we ran into him a couple years back he was he was touring with a, a great group of friends of ours uh, shaman's harvest from here in the states and so we we kind of we kind of you know stealing from time to time and uh and and uh but he uh he oh my god he's doing such a great job we're listening to mixes right now like i've my kitchen i've got this uh 
you know, crazy. I don't even know if they, they make, do you remember this, this uh, company that was in the 90s? Like, they made all the tape stuff. It was, uh, is it TDK? Yeah, like, they made all the cassette tapes. So they came out with this, this right. weird Bluetooth speaker. And, and okay. as crazy as it is, you know, like, I mean, you know, our cars now don't have, you know, CD players now. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. So ours, ours do, because we've, we've got, you know, older models, but, you know, so we've been listening to that, but I've been listening on this Bluetooth speaker, and it's so crazy because, you know, I've been I've been blaring, I mean, blaring it through the house, and you know, it's it's just it's fun, man, listening to the mixes and, and uh, you know, it's it's a crazy time because you know, obviously we can't we can't you know physically you know hang out with people, but for us it's been a big house party because we've been listening to all these mixes off the new record, and you know the kid, you know, I always judge if our album. Is, is good or not by if my kids like it you if know, they, they want to shake dance. their hands and yeah yeah throw their yeah. throw their arms around and then it's a rocker yeah, it's, that's it's it, that's the thing and, and you know you cannot I've, I've learned this with with being a dad <laughs> with being a dad you cannot make a kid like something if they no doubt if they don't like it yeah. they're gonna tell you they're gonna tell you the truth you and, they're, and they're not gonna pretend just to be nice you know they're not gonna go oh yeah this is really good dad uh, yeah. you know th- their face is gonna say it all <laughs> yep, that's the thing. I mean, when, when they get teenagers, which my, I've got two uh, 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 girls that are that are Scorpios. So I, I you know, I'm, I'm one of those tree hugging horoscope crazy, you know, hippies out here in the woods. So I, yeah, yeah, I yeah. believe fully in the horoscope, you know, life. And I'm telling you, man, my my girls are they're they're wild. I mean, they're <laughs> I imagine they're you know, my dad goes, see, this is what happens. You know, you were you were so wild as a kid. This is what you get right now. You know? <laughs> Beautiful karma, dude. Let's break for your penultimate track. Um, I was out in Vienna with my dad, well, my mum, dad, and sister last year, and I, t- I took my dad out to a bar, and we had this crazy night. We were drinking shots, and it was like this kind of rock and roll goth bar in in the outskirts oh, nice. of Vienna. And me and my dad don't really do that often, and so we had this great night. And as we were leaving the the pub, they were playing this song, and my dad, like in his drunken kind of slur, was like, "When I die, you got to make this song like my funeral song." And I was like, "Well, that's heavy, but you know that means that tonight has meant something to you, and I'll take that as you know a special moment that we've shared." And yeah, he was like, "I want this song to be played at my funeral," and so um, it was already my favorite Stones track, and and now because of that, uh, you know, it has extra weight and and symbolism and importance and. It's just a fucking bad boy song, isn't it, man? Oh, dude, listen, I'm I'm glad you had that that memory with your dad. I um, I I, I tell you, the 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 memories you make with with you know, with your with your family, with your dad, your mom, your your grandparents, you know, they I I, I truly believe this. They make an impact on your soul, and you never forget them. You know, ever those those magical memories. If it if it was, I you know, it, it could be something as simple as you know, a walk you know, with each other or, or sharing something to deal with music or, you know, I, I, working in a shop on an old car. I mean, it's those, those things imprint in us for life and, yeah. and they, they never leave us. I you believe know? that too. And it's, it's amazing. I mean, the, the, the stones for me, you know, dude, I, it, it's really hard. I, I have a hard time deciding whether is Led Zeppelin, my favorite rock and roll band or is the stones or are the stones. And I have to remind myself, well, Okay, Led Zeppelin is the greatest rock band of all time. The Beatles were the greatest songwriters of all time. And the Rolling Stones were the best country rock band of all time. You know what I mean? There you go. There you go. To me, to me there's no... Listen, they are... If, if anybody wants to argue that fact, please email me because uh, I, I truly believe the Stones... You know, I, I watched... And I watched Rhythm and Blues great. as well. They do that so well as well. You know, oh like gosh, Jumping man, Jack that, Flash, like straight up R and B rhythm and blues killer. You know, we recorded on Family Tree. We recorded a version of Jumping Jack Flash, and we couldn't get it on the record because of some licensing trouble. Oh man! And I was so friggin' bummed because man, <laughs> like I was like, oh man, it, you know. And it's a great track. I mean, the Stones have been a huge influence on us, and you know, it's crazy because like. You know, for me, listening to, you know, all the stuff they did, I mean, the early stuff and the later stuff, I, they're one of my favorite bands. I never got to see them live, and I, I just, 
they're, they're my bucket list. Like seeing... Yeah, me too. Okay, seeing, they're still doing it yeah. as well, thankfully, so hopefully we can still get our chance. Oh, absolutely. Have you, have you seen? Have you ever seen The Stones Live? Never, and I really want to. I, I need to. I have to. I, I need to for my soul. You know, I mean, man, they are... You know, they've, they've got to be, what, 77 and, and older? I mean, they're... You know, they're... Uh, they're in better shape than I am, and I'm 35. You know, I always, I always like that meme. It's like it's Keith Richards, and it says, um, "It says we, we got to start living a, a, a better. What is it? We, we got to start making the world a better place, so that Keith Richards can have a, a nice place to live." Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. You know, I know exactly the one you mean. We've got to start thinking about the world we're going to leave behind for Keith Richards. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's it, yeah. Oh man, now the Stones are incredible. I mean, I think. Um, that they're on my bucket list, man. Like seeing Elton John, uh, oh, me too, Stones, dude. Yeah, and and Jeff Lynne live. You know, that's that's for me. That's it.
Um, I want to pick your brain real quick about the new record. Just is there anything you can tell us in terms of like lyrical subject matter themes? Because I remember sitting down with you around what's the album that had Soul Train on? Uh oh, Soul Soul Machine. Soul Machine. Sorry. Yeah. 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 So. No, no, Soul Train. That, that was a better title. Where were you at? Where were you at, man? Uh, Soul, Soul Machine was on uh, Magic Mountain. Magic Mountain. Right? So, no, yeah. no, it wasn't. No, it was no, one after that. See, that right there proves to you that <laughs> when you when you do albums and do albums, do albums, you lose track. Soul Machine, I, I don't know. I swear to you, that's crazy. Wait, let me look it up. I think it was that's on the record how, after Magic Mountain. That, that's how a musician's brain works right there. <laughs> Like he, I'm, I'm literally on my iTunes. I, I can't, I can't. And there's a song on there as well about the the hangman something, the hangman's noose or the hangman's jewelry. Oh, hangman, hangman was on Kentucky. Kentucky. Was on Kentucky. Then, then that's yeah. the record. I think Soul Machine was on Kentucky as well. I think. Wait a minute. Hang on. Let's make sure. Let's get verification. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was on Kentucky. Yeah, there you go. It was on Kentucky. The journalist yeah, and the band member don't know. Um, no, but I'm telling you, you'd be surprised. You'd, you'd be surprised. <laughs> you ask guys, like, hey, man, what song is that? You're like, uh, oh, wow. Now, now, listen, if Ben was here, ben, ben would be slapping me because Ben can remember every single He's all over that. tour date. Man, you can, listen, you can ask, the next time the next time you're with, with us and hanging, ask Ben, say, Ben, where did you play in 2007, May 15th? And I, I'll, I'll lay, I'll lay a, a fresh uh, ten dollar bill down that he can tell you where we were. Since then, he's a. He's I'm going to hold you to that. Rolodex. <laughs> so we sat down in the Gibson guitar showrooms and we had like a little kind of conversation for an interview for, I guess, Metal Hammer or Classic Rock, one of those. And yeah. I remember talking to you about that record, and that for me was like the first time when you guys started getting political. Now, by that, I don't mean you were necessarily writing overtly political songs, but what you were writing about was being informed, perhaps for the first time, quite overtly and directly by the you know the current climate of of your country at that time. Sure. Um, so, in terms of like you know what's been going on recently, has any of that fed into this record that's going to be coming out? I think uh, I think in the past, yeah, we've we've. Uh... Definitely. I mean, you know, even uh, start. I, I guess it started on between the devil and the deep blue sea with right. change. You know, and and you know, there's always been hints of um, uh, the, the the. I I don't want to call it the political inspired songwriting that we do. I think more it's social it's commentary, the, perhaps. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it's just like. You know, sometimes, man, the the way we feel about things that that are, you know, going on in the world, we we can't not write about injustices. I think it's it's not a it's not a zeroed in direct um, thought about like a, you know a particular you know politician or anything. Yeah, it's just yeah, kind yeah. of a, a feeling that you get as being a human and having to live live in a world that you know. Where things are just not as as justified as they should be. I guess that's the, the best. That's the that's the, P, the PC way to say it, right? Sounds like I'm running for office over here. Uh, but I think that we have been a band that's been pretty transparent in our songwriting. I mean, all all four of us write the songs and the lyrics, and 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 that's hard sometimes because you know it's it's wonderful because you have four different opinions and and individual ideologies and beliefs and and uh, concerns and feelings but also you know how do you make all those feelings into one song you know for to make one point and we're, we're a special case because a lot of times you have, in a band you have maybe just a lead singer or the guitar player that writes all the lyrics and music you know as i know there's there's tons of, of groups that have that but we're you know, we're and, and it probably it's it's much easier for them because you know there's there's only two opinions or two thoughts you know or one that's going in the song. But with us, it's a collective. So um, you know, sometimes we're writing lyrics and and we're sitting there and you know you can tell the two guys that don't agree with the lyrics and the other two that are just like full force like yes, this is awesome. <laughs> so we we have to figure out how to make it work for everybody. Um, I yeah, I mean, I think on this new record, we've we've got songs that are just a wide spectrum i 
think. You know, there's there's a couple, you know, songs that deal with, um, you know, Chris is... Uh, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> she's like, you still on the phone, Dad? <laughs> yeah, she's like, are you still on the phone? <laughs> well, they, they get in their, their uh, you know, Moana outfits and their, their uh, frozen... Uh, Elsa outfits and run around and free stuff. And so <laughs> I, I'm, I'm really thankful they, they I didn't get shot with just a, a frost beam right here because I'd have had to you know stop the interview until, <laughs> until I'm unfrozen. So, uh, but I think that there's there's a lot of um, there's there's a lot of stuff. I mean, there's a couple songs where you know uh, Chris you know d- uh, jumps deep into um, you know his his uh, uh, dealings with his you know depression and how he he deals with that and uh now he's a he's a monster you know he he made a choice to um to um really help himself through some dark times and we we were right there with him and you know it's uh i guess i guess sometimes like you know i worry that you know we're um you know singing about maybe the same stuff sometimes but i think that um if if those feelings are you know if if you if you make different songs about the same feeling, it's like you can't help but sometimes feel that way because you know those are things that are your your life is about you know. So I mean, uh, there's songs on the record that are man, just like we call them uh, uh, bar burners. You know, they're just like man, dude, that's like such a driving anthem. Like you could you know get behind a motorcycle or a you know a car and just like just drive for miles listening to. So I think there's a great mix. Um, I will say that for all the all the heavy fans out there, I don't want I don't want to give too much away. You know, I don't want to give too much away. I feel you. But I think that all the all the people that may have you know said, "Oh man, you guys got away from the heavy stuff," and and I, I know, like you know, we as a band, you know, we can't we can't make the same record twice, and I, I wouldn't expect us to, you know. And uh, but I think that the the people that are out there that are the the, the heavy fans of Blackstone Cherry are going to appreciate this record a lot because. It's uh, I think it's the heaviest record we've ever put out. Honestly. Boom! You know, sonically, um, the uh, the the lyrics, the um, just the playing and things. I mean, it's it's beautiful. I'm super proud of it, and it's really hard to to uh, you know, for for me, it's kind of hard to talk about you know a, an album because you know you, you always, like I said earlier, you don't you don't want to make that album seem like oh man, this is the greatest thing ever, and all our other records weren't. You know, this this blows them away. It, it's not it's not like that at all. It's just that this record is different, and it has hints and traces and and uh, of all the other records you know combined. But I think that this is a uh, this is definitely a, a, a newer sound for us. So I hope people dig it. Well, you would also like to think that as a group, you're developing and maturing and evolving and improving every step of the way. And so, of course, you're going to feel like this new chapter is an improvement and a culmination of everything that you've done to date because, you know, you're improving and you're getting better and you're growing. And Right? Otherwise, you just are. Oh, we're, we're the same band we were 10 years ago. We haven't progressed at all. <laughs> I think, we're I just think the Ramones. The we're just going to do the same song forever, and that's great. But, you know, there's only a few bands that can do that. You know, ACDC, Ramones, maybe they're the only two that can just do the same that's record that, time yeah, and time again. That was going to be my, my next statement, man, is, you know, the, the bands that have done this, the, have stuck to their same formula for so many years, you know, that they, they do it so well you know and like acdc is a great example you know every you know every record they ever put out it's not that uh it was a carbon copy but they they stayed right on that same path and and i think some people expect that and want that but you know with you know look at led zeppelin led zeppelin never ever made the same record twice you know yeah and i guess yeah we're, we're growing and, and we're you know as we get older our our topics that we that we write about are are you know, changing, you know, we're, we don't have the same mindset we had when we were 21 years old. There's no, there's no way to, to go back to that. But also we couldn't have wrote an album like this at 21. So yeah, I, I'm just, I just hope people love it. And, uh, you know, I, it's, it's, a, it's amazing that to me still, we, we have fans that are all over the world and it's, you know, I, sometimes I, I go, dang man, like, you know, there's probably somebody right now listening to our record in, you know, Australia or England or Canada, and I'm out here putting wood in my outdoor firebox boiler right now with cow crap all over my muck boots. But um, <laughs> it's, you know, and that, and 
that's the reality, you know, because we're all we're all country boys, and it's like I, it just it's mind blowing sometimes to think that you know a, a little band from Edmonton, Kentucky has has done as well as we we have, and, and we're very appreciative and thankful, and and uh, you know, look at the, the fans that that we've made, you know, uh, over in in England, and you're you know home it's yeah it's on it, it, if you told me that we were gonna you know do what we did in in england i i would have laughed at you because it, that's it was just so crazy you know remember the first time we ever went over it was in 2007 and we were rolling around in a little bitty sprayer van and and uh you know it's just it's insane to see what we've been able to do because of of, of the great people that have supported us and the great tunes you continue to make, and it couldn't have happened to a nicer bunch of guys, dude. You're the best. I've well, always you loved you. You know that. that. And uh, I hope it's not too long before you can get out there and start playing these new songs to real life human beings in real oh, life. Me? Oh, dude, we, <laughs> listen, I, Ben's gonna have to go to uh, um, live music therapy if we don't get to play somewhere. He's like, he did the day at the studio. He goes, man, I don't know what I'm gonna do. If we can't play shows, I, I'm, I'm gonna lose my mind. And, and I think we're, we're all feeling that, you know, I mean, yeah. it, we're, we're treasuring our time with our family through, through this, you know, this horrific thing that's going on right now. But I think that in about a month, it's gonna, it's gonna hit us and we're gonna be like, Ooh, all right. You know, because I mean, obviously, you know, we had, we had shows in April that, um, you know, we're, we're postponed. I mean, every every touring act, artist, musician in the world right now has been hit by this. You know, I mean, every, let me rephrase that, everybody in the world has been hit by this, but just specifically speaking in the, Our media in the industry, world, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, in the music industry, I mean, we're, we're not, we, we can't tour, you know, obviously. And uh, so, you know, we're, let's, let's just all, you know, stay positive and, uh, and hopefully, you know, by... You know, I'm I'm hoping by at least you know June or July this stuff this stuff will be gone and, and we can we can get on with with living our lives and uh, and like you said you know hopefully when when we all come out of this you know I think the biggest thing we all need to remember is how we felt during this yeah. and keep that positivity and that love for life and and just just like the common goal of uh, you know being a, a a human and and being passionate and caring for others you know no matter you know where where we all come from and our, our background differences we need to we need to try really hard to be um you know be be just better human beings you know if that and that's to each other that's to the environment that's uh you know to our our um to everybody amen dude um what a pleasure catching up my friend always oh my gosh you kidding me look man I, you know, I love you so much. You, you've been a great, great friend and brother to us. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I guess, I guess we can't go out drinking anymore. I guess we'll have to just get, like pull up two lawn chairs by the bus and drink like, uh, you know, non-alcoholic margaritas. And well, you can, you can, I'll take care of you. I'll, I'll be your designated, uh, uh, driver. I'm down. Well, one of the last things you said to me when I saw you that night in Camden and you might not remember, but you said, dude, you got to come out. You got to come stay with me. You got to come see my house. You got to come chill. And uh, one day, if the offer still stands, I would love to make that happen. And yeah, I'll sit on the porch with you all day long. You can drink. You, you can drink your alcohol-free margaritas, and <laughs> I'll have a little. I'll have a little cool box of Miller Light, and we'll just watch the world go by. I'd love that. Matt, you're welcome at my home anytime. And I do remember saying that. I've got to. I've, listen, I, I tell people all the time. I meet people, and, and they say, you know, uh, man, you remember me. And I say, man, I'm gonna be honest with you. I never ever forget a face, and I'm I'm pretty pretty darn good with names too. I said I got a, a memory like an elephant, and I got an ass like one too. So <laughs> I, I promise you, I remember you. <laughs> hey, I love you, man. You guys stay safe over there, and I, I I I'm so glad to to get to talk to you. I'm glad you're okay. I hope uh, all your family's great, and uh, just to everybody listening, man, just try to try to stay positive and. Uh, Stay in your homes, and we'll we'll all get through this thing, and we'll come out on the other side, you know, better. And uh, yeah, man, let's let's just get back to to life. Get back to the dancing days with Led Zeppelin. <laughs>
You'll be my 